What I wish I knew before I dropped out of college, or even just growing up, I wish someone had taught me more about non-traditional paths in life. I think we all grow up thinking, okay, I go to school, I go to college, I intern somewhere, I get a job, I work for you know a couple decades and I retire. That's like the American dream. So wait a minute, it said, did he make how much? Let me move myself up here. Make myself a little smaller. I ain't that important. 245,000 a year. $245,000 a year. He's under 30 years old. He makes a quarter million dollars a year in California. Now, one of the things that I tell people on a regular basis is a lot of times the environment that you in, because a lot of people say, well, it's too expensive to live in California. It's too expensive to live in New York. It's too expensive to live in you know, Florida, Atlanta, and all of these other places. I will say that one of the benefits of being in a bigger city or in a, in a, in a uh, more conducive environment to generate more money is that you can network more effectively. You have a better customer base. And I have not seen this video, so I don't know what he does for a living or anything like that. Um, but you have more opportunities because um, you pay more to play, but at the same time, the opportunities are greater. So I will say that. I will say that. Um, Tyron Davis says married 20 years. My wife is my fun facts. Real talk. I have more fun. Me and my daughter was doing, um, what were we doing? Uh, slime. We were making slime last night before I got on a Lapeef let's talk show. Me and my daughter was making slime. My hands was green. <laughs> I had a lot of fun making slime with my daughter last night. My name is Moses Lin, I'm 29 years old, and I bring in $245,000 a year as a destination wedding guitarist and landlord. A destination wedding guitarist? Is that what the fuck he does? I was not expecting him to say that. I thought he was going to say I was a software engineer. This dude says as a destination wedding guitarist and as a landlord. Do you know, <laughs> this reminds me, me and Rita used to be in a, uh, we used to lay in the bed at night a long time ago, and we used to watch HGTV. And they would be doing shows like, hey, I want to buy this home or whatever, and I want to move or whatever. And they would be like, hey, what do you do for a living? And they would be like, yeah, I polish floors for a living. And I file, and, and then the wife would be like, and I file paperwork. And they'd be like, okay, so what are your budget? $1.5 million. Like, what the fuck are they doing? How do they have such a huge budget? And they, they bagging groceries. This dude said, I'm a, a wedding guitarist. What the fuck? Never heard of that in my life. He made $175,000 in 2021 from 40 to 50 weddings. Wow. Wow. That is insane. I would never in my life think of or think that this dude, that you can make that type of money. I'm learning something new just like everybody else. Brought in $42,000 from his rental properties. Okay. And another and 28,000 in other income. This dude is a hustler. I never thought I would feel the making living performing. It doesn't even feel like working. <laughs> We're just partying. <laughs> I grew up in a small suburb of Chicago. <gasps> oh, I got to get this guy props. This guy is the man. This dude was dancing and playing the guitar at the wedding and getting paid at the same time. I got to give him I got to give him props. Listen. The the value of what you are, what you do is based off of what people are willing to pay for. Up, my dad was the pastor of a, a very small church. My mom would help him. She's the church pianist. That's kind of how we grew up. I was the pastor's kid. A lot of expectations put on me to be a certain way, act a certain way. Bad. That's also where I got my start in music. So I, I used to play at churches. My parents didn't have any playing music in church. Now you get in the bag like that. And so I knew that if I went to college and took a traditional route, I'd be hundreds of thousands in debt. And I, I just didn't want to start my life that way. How come all of these people that don't, that's not black, have the same story as far as them attending college for free? They don't go into debt. They don't go to historically black colleges and all of this stuff. They figure out a way to either pay for it themselves, their parents pay for it, or they join the Marines or the Army or something like that, and they go to college for free. Smart man. Most people don't know this. The Marine Corps has a band and the entire Marine Corps has 10 guitars. So there's 10 slots this for dude guitarists. Getting and I auditioned for one of the spots. I got it. So I spent the majority of my enlistment, you know, playing in rock bands, jazz bands, and performing Look for at this the dude. Marine Corps. 
Chris People says 100K in Atlanta Millennial Money is a masterclass in Victim Olympics. Please do that one this month for learning purposes. I did not know about it. Send, send me the video, Chris Peoples. Anton Daniels, 413 at gmail.com. Send me that video. I'll do it. I went to college and I started a YouTube channel, actually. Which was just for fun, you know. I had always done like a. But it's probably the other college. incoming at the talking time, about. I was doing really well in school, and I was also loving, you know, putting out YouTube videos and just having a good time with that. So I would be in class, you know, on my laptop editing my YouTube videos, and I just I felt like I couldn't focus on either one of them. Whoa, 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 whoa. He dropped out. Of, I wonder what his uh, major was. He had oh, he only had one more uh, one more semester. He dropped out of college with just one semester left, and he wasn't getting no debt to become a field full-time music. Now, this is the one mistake that I think that he's making. So why not finish it and do all of it at the same time? Why go through all of this work and just to drop out one, one semester, literally three to four months before you get your stuff? But anyways, he's getting the bag, but I, I still think he should have finished. My family was against it. My uncle apparently called my parents and was very concerned that, you know, his nephew would be on the street corner performing for tips. And I don't know, for me, I just had a dream and I wanted to chase it. Oh, no. See, this is the shit that I don't like. I don't like it. I don't like it. I know he's getting the bag now, but I don't like him depending on the federal government in order to be able to support himself early in his career. Unemployment insurance and food stamps? This sounds like some, some, mm, let me not say it. I don't like this. I don't like it at all. Let's continue. It was a pretty big risk, but I think that's what made it so exciting. And I love that I did it that way. I've always believed that if you don't have a safety net, if you don't have a backup plan, you have to succeed. Disney found his YouTube channel and recruited Moses to perform at its restaurants and hotels. That's an interesting thing. So he was able to market himself effectively. And then Disney started paying him to come and play at their hotels and restaurants. So he caught a break. See, it wasn't just entire hustle, right? It was hustle. It was self-belief. But how many people go out to California to become actors and then they wind up becoming dope fiends and living in a, in a, in a homeless camp? And this is one of the dangerous things that come along with having these conversations because people will say, oh, follow your dreams. But this motherfucker got a break and he was on food stamps. Another break. A mistake that, that he turned into monetization. Hey, Everything had like, to yeah, go his way. Married. Will you play at my wedding? And I was like, oh, of course. Thanks, Chris. You know? And I, I show up and the vibes at a wedding are so, you can't match them. You really can't. Everyone's drunk. Everyone's having the time of their lives. They're so excited. This is the, you know, the best night of their whole month. It's incredible. Because with music, like, you play into that vibe. You give them energy to give it back. All of a sudden, it's this huge party. Everyone's vibing. And I just, I got addicted to weddings. I think a lot of the difficulties I ran to early on was just, like, pricing. I, I had no idea how to price myself. So my first wedding, I charged $250, which is ridiculously cheap. Because that's just, like, that's the going rate that they pay at restaurants. And so... Roddy says, what's up, Anton? Shout out to all of the bag chasers. Also, Anton, I sent an email to you for mentorship. I hope to hear from you soon. When did you send it, Roddy? I'm going to check it out. I got uh, my people going through it. I'm going through it. So absolutely, my friend. Yep, I'll check it out. Thank you, Roddy. Thank you for contributing to the platform. And shout out to all of the bag chasers. That's what I expected to make at a wedding, so I charged $250. And I remember I did this one wedding where I talked to the cocktail hour musician and I asked them how much they were making and they said $1,200. I was like, oh my God, I could be charging that too. And so I went home, I doubled my pricing immediately and I started booking more. And every time I raised my prices, yep. I booked more clients and they were nicer clients and they treated me better. I started raising my prices and I scaled it down. So now I'm doing... He got on a Submariner too. I just want to say that. I noticed his watch immediately. It looked like he got on a uh, Rolex Submariner. Uh, let me say this, too, about um, pricing and things like that. I shouldn't even be saying this. Mm. I'm going to reserve that for an exclusive video for the bag chasers because I'm going to tell you all how you all need to price yourselves and your businesses because it's not based off of what you value or what you think you're worth. It's based off of something completely different. It's a, it's a real formula that content creators or musicians or entertainers or people have 
for them to be able to price themselves effectively, stay working, stay busy, and maximize the amount of money that they're making. So I'm going to do an exclusive video for the Patreon members uh, on that specifically. I don't want to get that type of information out. Y'all going to get that about 40 to 50 a year and for me that's a very manageable level and I, i'm very happy with where that's at right now so 40 to 50 weddings a year is usually what i do that's one a week that's one wedding a week boy so he's making four to six thousand dollars per wedding and he's basically doing one at least one wedding a week because if you're doing 40 to 50 and it's 52 weeks in a year and he probably take a few weeks off um, and they got to pay for his expenses. That means they got to pay for your flight and your hotel. That's a pretty freaking good deal. This dude got a, he, he got a hustle. That's a hustle. I made about $175,000 in weddings in 2021. And that's not including tips. Wow. That's impressive. Wait, don't go play at a black wedding because they show ain't going to tip your ass. Not a Nigerian one. Shout out to Yoli says, I'll be waiting for that video. I got you, Yoli. But don't go play at a Nigerian wedding. They don't believe in tipping. They believe in paying you exactly what it is that you got to. I'm a, you know, I'm a dig at my Nigerians. I love y'all, but I'm just saying y'all don't believe in tipping. It is what it is. He also pays an assistant around $250 a wedding. Dope. Growing up, we didn't have a lot of money. All right, this is the part I want to see. Our mindset was very much this scarcity mindset of there isn't enough. We have to save as much as we can versus now. I oh, he like balling. Abundance mindset. Where look at this. All right. So let's look. He got 400. He, he pays 5000 a month in housing. $5,000 a month. That is the majority of his budget. $1,000 a month in discretionary spending. $400 a month in food, $223 in gas, $154 in insurance, and $50 for the phone. Now, what I'm trying to understand is, first of all, he says he's a landlord. And I don't, I'm trying to understand what the context is behind this $5,000 a month in housing. Either he got a really, really, really nice house, um, mortgage and utilities. He must live in a really nice house. He must live in, and then discretionary is basically what he want to do. He do what he want to do, shopping and home improvement. I don't see him putting any money up. I don't see him reinvesting any money. But then this is only a fraction because if you got a $6,800 a month, let's just round it up to $7,000. That, that basically equates to somewhere between eighty dollars and $84,000 a year in discretionary and basically you paying yourself. So if he make it a quarter million, but he only spending eighty thousand dollars a year, I'm assuming the rest of it goes to investments. But he must got a really, really nice house, a really, really nice house. For me, there is so much work out there. There's hundreds and hundreds, millions of weddings every year, and there's billions of dollars spent in this industry. There's so much money out there. Yep. Having to unlearn a lot of the money. Now I told y'all not to spend more than five thousand dollars on a wedding, and he making five thousand dollars a pop just for playing at a man. I wonder how many of these people are actually financing these weddings. Mm. Think about that. Money lessons in my past was really hard. My mortgage for the house that I live in is four thousand seven hundred and fifty-five dollars a month. So the house, the just the house that he live in. A lot of y'all are saying it's probably for the mortgages on all his rentals. No, that is for the mortgage on the place that he lives in. His mortgage is forty-seven hundred dollars a month. And I'm assuming it's just him because I don't see no kids or nothing. Only him. His mortgage on the house that he lives in is $4,700 a month. And he spends $800 a month on expenses, food, work. He also gets free health care coverage for serving in as the Marines. As day to day, I use a very simple budget tracking app called Dollar Bird. All my expenses aside, so like fixed bills aside, all my variable spending, I budget about $800 a month. So that's like food, fun, everything. And then for that, I just put an 800 bucks a month. And every time I spend, I just deduct it. And so I can very easily see where I'm at every month. Oh, no. Oh, okay. That's an investment property. I was like, you paying $5,000 a month for that? Moses tries to save around $10,000 a month to buy more investment properties. Okay, so he is stacking. And this, this is what I like. I don't like just being frugal. I believe in being frugal for the first five to 10 years um, that you start making money. 
And then after that, what you have to do, in my opinion, in my personal opinion, is after that, then you start to um, be, you start to spend money, but you still are supposed to contribute to what you're supposed to do. So you're still supposed to be making investments. You're still supposed to be contributing to your 401k. You're still supposed to be taking care of business. So I believe in having your cake and eat it too. After you prove yourself and after you prove your concept and be able to make an ex you know, a decent amount of money for an extended period of time, and then you have enough investments to be able to sustain yourself and you remove all the debts, then you can start balling. So it says he saves about $10,000 a month to buy more investment properties. I'm with it. I'm with that. I don't have a savings account. I don't have a Roth IRA or any of that kind of stuff. I like to put the vast majority of my money in real estate. The reason for that. I'm okay with him not having a Roth. I'm not okay with it, but I'm okay with it simply because he makes too much money not to contribute the $6,000 a year into a um, Roth IRA. $6,000. It's nothing. Uh, Teron Davis says 80K between me and my wife, 3K rent is still hard. No, they only want you to make $4,000 a year, Teron. Um, I think that he should contribute that $6,000 a year into the Roth IRA. It's not that big of a deal. Um, but I like the fact that he doesn't have a savings account. He's putting all of his money into investments. He's making his money work for him. And he's off also fighting off inflation by making sure that his money is making money on top of money. I'm with that. That is the returns are a lot higher, but also inflation eats up your savings. Yo, am I not on it or am I not on it? Y'all better fucking start listening to me. And if you haven't booked a coaching session, Anton Daniels, 413 at gmail.com and get your coaching session. Am I not on it or am I not on it? He literally just said exactly what I just said. Word for word. Um, Aaron says a few weeks ago, I ran into a dude who was a full-time wedding DJ. He had an AP and drove a Wraith. He does two to three weddings a month. It's a lot of dudes getting money out here. It's a lot. It's too much money out here. But he literally just said exactly what I said. As a musician, I never really expected to make enough money to buy real estate. So when I bought my first rental property, it was about three or four years into me owning my music business. And so at that point, I saved up enough money that I could afford a rental property. So he bought a rental property, not even in the state that he lived in. He bought it in Little Rock, Arkansas. So he's not investing in California. He's investing elsewhere. Aha. Uh -huh. So everyone from California, New York, they're moving to Texas, you know, Phoenix, yep. Tennessee, like those yep. places. Yep. And those people are moving to Little Rock. So Little Rock is that place where it's up and coming. Property values still haven't caught up to rental prices. So property values are low, rents are high. Let me go and buy some property in Little Rock and see what's happening. And that kind of gap, that's where you make the money. He owns four rental properties. I've nice. always been the type where I just do something life. and then I learn along the way. A lot of people, I feel like they, they read a lot of books, they go to seminars, they wait till they feel ready before they jump in. Nope. I'm the opposite. I jump mm -hmm. and then I learn how to swim. Yep. With real estate, I, I, I feel like I knew enough and I was like, the rest I'm going to learn on the way. And if it all fails, I'm just going to sell the property and lose a couple thousand. It'll be fine. My day-to-day -day does not revolve around real estate at all. The reason I, like I that watch. real estate as a side thing is because it's super passive. So my property manager takes care of everything. He just sends me invoices. Something breaks, he fixes it, he sends me an invoice. He sends me a bill at the end of the month. And you know, but that's a problem. Let me tell y'all why that's a problem is because he could possibly be getting finessed. I have zero problems with any of my properties and I don't use a property manager at all. If something breaks and I send one of my people that work for me, probably an assistant, to go on Home Depot and order a new dishwasher and send it in there and then have it installed. A lot of ways that y'all get finessed and a lot of ways that y'all lose money because when things are too easy and it's too super passive, a lot of times he only owns four properties. There's no reason why he should not be able to manage those properties effectively. You don't need to be given a property management that type of money. And, and for those of y'all that don't, that don't understand, the way that property management companies charge, well, I wonder if I should put that in the Patreon too. Anyways, um, he should be very, very careful with that because he could be getting finessed. So I'm able to focus 100% of my attention on weddings, on music, and real estate just makes money on the side. Sabrina, no. All, every last one of my properties is here in Michigan. Every last one of them. Um, every one of them is in Metro Detroit. So that's basically the surrounding suburbs of Detroit, which is one of the reasons that I said that I'm about to start investing in the city itself. 
So every property that I have is outside of the city of Detroit. It's around the surrounding areas. Shout out to my dog, Razik says, just showing some support. I highly appreciate you more than you know. You are exceptionally needed. And I hope I've added some value and insight into some combos you absolutely have. And hopefully I see you on Fight Club tonight, Razik. Thank you for contributing to the platform, my friend. Real estate investing, honestly, I think it's more rainbows and sunshine than people think it is. I think people think it's really difficult. I think the hardest part is actually just the mindset. I'm trying to buy about two properties a year. Right now I'm on track to hit that in about three to four. I actually got that book. <laughs> I just loaned it out to somebody to read, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. Um, shout out to Justin K, he says, Big Dog, he sounds like me. I'm building the wedding venue and parking. All my cash is in real estate. That's smart. But the key is that you're actually investing in something that is uh, going to appreciate over time and making money on top of money. Shout out to my dog, Justin K. My guy. I love you, Justin. For years. Look, Azriel. Hey, Anton. He's reading that book that you suggested to me. Did you start reading it yet, Azriel? You know why I told you to read that book, too. Otherwise, you know, you get FOMO, you look at a property like this is perfect, but you can't afford it. You don't want to be in that place where you're you're overstretching yourself. You got a nice invest. closet. You got that minimalist lifestyle. I like that. He will be. So a lot of that is just my real estate appreciating. And that's a huge part of my net worth growth. So right now, my goal of real estate is to be financially free. So what that means is my Spaces says, book my hotel for the meetup last night. Shout out to my dog, Spaces. Yeah, we got the meetup. It's going to be dope. Come from real estate, we'll pay all my bills. He was trying to get that international to, bag. You know, do a wedding in Italy or Greece. There has never been a moment where I regretted dropping out of college. It is by far the best move I've ever made in my entire life. All right, so I'm with that. I think that is dangerous. I'm with it. I just think it's dangerous to spin a narrative um, that everybody should consider dropping out of college and following their dreams. I think that you can do both. I think that if, it, if it's that important for you, um, that you can pursue whatever it is that you're supposed to do from a business perspective. But if you once one semester away, finish that shit. Get that junk out of the way. And that way you got a contingency plan because that is your safety net. You'll always be able to get a bag and whatever it is that you're a professional in, just like the opportunities that came as along uh that came along with me doing it is doing what it is that I do for a living. But more importantly, I like his hustle. I like his hustle. I think he might be getting finessed by his property manager. It's a possibility, but especially if they out of state because you don't know what you don't know. But yeah, he getting that bag and he taking care of business and it looks really, really great. And so I, I don't necessarily have a problem with anything that he says. Been a long show, been a good show, but been a long show. And I hope y'all that that y'all enjoyed what, what it is that we did today. I'm getting tongue tied. I'm talking too fast. I hope y'all enjoy what we was doing today. So yeah, make sure y'all subscribe to the channel. Hit a like for the YouTube algorithm. Make sure you turn on your notifications. We doing Fight Club tonight. And then more importantly, make sure that you share this with your family and friends. But I need you to do me one more favor before we get up out of here, ladies and gentlemen. Don't fumble the bag. A. And then B, make sure that you guys are not running into Victim Olympics, that you are taking care of business, that you are about that life. And then make sure you tap it into the Patreon. The link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. All right. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all for rocking with me. Um, it's going to be an awesome weekend. Please don't get caught up in these streets. See y'all at Fight Club tonight. I love y'all. I'm going to talk to y'all later.